Right, right, right. So the mark, right, the marks of contact refer to two things: the opponent and your weapon. Right. Mm -hmm. So with the size, you have to be aiming closer to the strong of your blade for that contact, and that's why they're called marks of contact. Right. I go here. That's where I want my contact, so that when I slide through, there is enough weapon to go through that target. Up here, I don't have to worry too much about it, right? I just have to get it to go a little bit over. Uh, extend your arms. Oh, okay. right? I just have to have it go a little bit over past this so that I can bring it back. Same with the neck, okay? But, yeah, I, I, mean, I understand that when we're, we're not wearing gear or anything like that, but we're doing is slow. This is a slow control exercise, right? I'm not supposed to go fast. I'm just going to go here. Right? And I'm practicing my targeting as I come here. Okay? But again, contact. Contact. Not touching, but contact. Know where your blade is contacting that part of your of your opponent. Same with Cho. I want Cho, I want this mostly at the quick. Right? Because I'm not drawing through. I'm going, I'm, I'm kind of going right through. Okay, so I want I want this to hit at the point of percussion, generally speaking, if we're going to talk about real weapons that way. Okay. Right? Boom. Okay. Shim and shiak, contact with the tip. It's as simple as that, right? Boom, boom, boom. So we can think about the different parts of the blade also being part of the marks of contact, right? The strong being associated with Psy, quick, being associated with Cho, and the tip, the very end, being associated with Shin Xie. Okay. Right? And uh, so yeah, so there's um, that. So that's an important thing to, 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 to realize about the marks of contact, is that, that little bit. So, okay. it's, it transfers well to armored combat, like not like as in like you know, protective gear, but as in like armor armor, because this essentially is going to be focusing on weak points, joints, mm -hmm. connections, mm -hmm. right? The armpit, the um, iliac crease, right? Mm -hmm. uh, shoulder, neck, mm -hmm. these natural spots, right? where we know that the opponent has to be able to move, mm -hmm. right? That no matter how much armor they're wearing, it's going to be less there, okay? So this idea, right, of the marks of contact, the way that we're setting it out is essentially based on that, right? But really thinking about that, that, right? Yeah, sure, the neck is a target because you can chop off the head, right? But in armored combat, right, the head is not so so uh, vulnerable, right? If they if they have a helmet, okay. So helmets generally have to be able to move, right? Um, they don't always they don't always move because there are some reasons. There are some times you don't need them to move, and to have them move would be dumb, right? But gorgets and all of that kind of thing. Even a gorget is going to come up only to a certain point to where you have to go there. Now, in armor combat, is that where you're going to be striking, like with a long sword? Eh, probably not, but it is where you're going to be thinking about getting in, right? So with half sorting and all that kind of thing, you're thinking about the neck, the elbow, the between the plates, right? Here at the waist, right? Very difficult to armor this, this section right here because you need to be very mobile, right, in that sense. So.